Neurobiogenesis versus Biogenesis The search of the origin of life in early time led to the development to the hypothesis of spontaneous generation or abiogenesis. The theory stated that the origin of living organisms were non-living objects. This belief continued up to the 19th century and was supported by many thinkers of that time. The observations leading to this belief included the appearance of worms in stored grains and other foods, rats and mice in the garbage, snakes and frogs from the mud of the river banks. The belief was strongly propounded by Aristotle around 350 BC. It remained unchallenged for more than 2000 years. The Greek explanation included the mention of goddess Gia who created people from non-living material like stones. Now, there is one property that animals are found to have in common with plants. For some plants are generated from the seeds of the plants, whilst other plants are self-generated through formation of some elemental principle similar to a seed. And of these latter plants, some derive their nutrient from the ground, whilst others grow inside other plants as is mentioned by the way in my treatise on botany. So with animals, some spring from parent animals according to their kind, whilst other grow spontaneously and not from a kindred stock. And of these instances of spontaneous generation, some come from purifying earth or vegetable matter, as in the case of number of insects, while others are spontaneously generated in the inside of animals out of secretions of their several organs. It was presumed by Aristotle that non-living matter contained vital heat or pneuma, which was responsible for converting the non-living thing into living things. Aristotle believed that the origin of life was due to mixture of hot, cold, dry and wet with the elements in the part of body along with the vital heat. Jan Baptist von Helmont he described many experiments in support of spontaneous generation. He gave recipes for preparing mice from the soiled cloth, while used basils, brick and sunlight to produce scorpions. It was shown by him that a tree grows in size and bulk, but nearby soil does not lose any weight. Thus, the extra mass in the tree was spontaneously generating from some other source. The lack of knowledge of photosynthesis was the reason for misinterpretations of his observations. It was propounded by Aristotle that spontaneous generation could also occur in air. He also pointed out that it was possible only in small creatures and surely not in the case of humans. The first blow to the theory of spontaneous generation was given by the work of Francisco Reddy. In the mid-1660s, this Italian physician ruled out the possibilities that maggots or worms arose from rotting meat. His detailed study led to the conclusion that maggots were actually the insect larva which developed from eggs laid by the flies. The hypothesis to be tested was that the fly eggs gave rise to maggots. Thus, if the flies did not lay eggs on the meat, the larvae or the maggots would not develop. For this, he performed a classical experiment in 1668. He took three jars, each with a raw meat. One was sealed, the other covered with a wire gauge or a filter cloth. And the third was kept open. After incubation, maggots did not develop on the meat in the sealed jar. In the second case, maggots were found on the wire gauge or filter cloth and not on the meat while the exposed meat was teeming with maggots. The only conclusion that could be drawn from the above observations was that the fly seating on the meat or on the filter cloth or the wire gauge laid eggs which developed into maggots. Because if the meat would have been the origin of maggots, as propounded by the spontaneous generation theory, all the meat pieces in all the three jars would show the presence of maggots. But this was not the case. Hence, Reddy successfully tried to eradicate the theory of spontaneous generation. Reddy thus tried to establish the theory of biogenesis which stated that life arises from life or non-living or only living organisms can give rise to living being. 
meat alone cannot produce maggots exposed meat when contacted with adult flies shows the presence of maggots thus the flies lay eggs which hatch into maggots and thus the spontaneous generation of maggots was disproved